world, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for joining me once again for another new edition of Inside the Minds of the Filmmaking Minds of Film. Joining me today is the acclaimed writer-director of the new feature film for Catherine and all-around awesome dude, Ethan Hunter. Ethan, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Kind of freaking me out here, man. You get that a lot. So, let's begin at the beginning. That's an excellent place to start. You were born in a very small town. Yes. Would you describe it as teeny weeny or itty bitty? You know what? Let's skip ahead a little. Cool. Why did you start making movies? I thought it would get me laid. Really? No. Has it anyway? No, absolutely not. No, sorry dude, that sucks. It's cool. You, uh, you wanna talk about it? Absolutely not. For most of your earlier work, you wrote, directed, produced, photographed, and edited. But for For Catherine, you worked with a small crew, a DP, an editor, a sound designer. Why? It's kind of like what Robert Rodriguez once said, when you wear too many hats, you find that a lot of them don't really fit right. And it's not that they didn't fit at all, it's just that they looked an awful lot better on the cats who were wearing them for this movie. Are we talking about actual hats? No. See, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. If you could be any kind of squirrel, what kind of squirrel would you be? Uh, flying? Flying, flying squirrel? Flying squirrel? Me too, that's what I'd be. I'd be a flying squirrel, because they can like, you know, kind of fly. Stuff. <laughs> anyway, so why did you decide to take on a feature? You know how some people cut themselves as some sort of penance or, or some kind of autoflagellation thing, you know? Sure. And some people, you know, maybe they fast or or maybe some people watch Will and Grace. Mm-hmm. No? Well, I decided to take on a feature. Wow, it's like interviewing a Fallout Boy song. How long did it take to make it? It took about four years to make the movie, a little more than two to shoot and a little more than one to cut. In your estimation, why do you think it took so long. Uh, you know, everyone was working for free and, and we were all still in college when we first started shooting the thing and, and a lot of us had full-time jobs, so, you know, sometimes months would go by between, between shooting days. We were also either borrowing or stealing all of our equipment, so we had to work around the availability of the camera on any given day. I mean, you know, it's not like I was moonlighting as a bad man or anything, but there were definitely, you know, snags to, to trip us up. Uh, how badly did that suck? Well, there was this one time when I got careless down by the docks and the Joker and his goons jumped me and, and it was a pretty bad situation. To, oh, oh, the movie, the movie, yeah, yeah, the movie. Well, you know, it was it sucked that, that it took so long and it sucked that that we were at the mercy of so many outside forces, but, you know, we had a good time making it. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. And you told your cast and crew it would be a three-month shoot? Yeah. Oops. On a scale of one to ten. How would you rate questions who ask you to rate things on a scale of 1 to 10? 3. That is an excellent number. It's what I'd do. If there was one thing you could see more of in film, what would it be? Travis Barkley. Fair enough. I'd also like to see more people taking chances. You know, audience today are a lot smarter than most writers and directors are comfortable giving them credit for. And I think it's time that, that somebody stood up and they were like, you know, we should make, we should start making movies differently, not for the sake of being different, but for the sake of being better. What do you think is your greatest weakness as a filmmaker? Travis Barkley. No, oh, seriously. Seriously? I don't know, do I have a strength? I've got a lot left to learn, like a whole lot. But I think, I think the next one's gonna really, really blow people's minds, you know? I think people are gonna, are gonna be pretty damn impressed with what we do with the next one. So even though I feel like I've come a long way since Catherine, for now I'll still say that inexperience is my greatest weakness. And cookies. Have you tried cookies? Yes. Yes, I've tried cookies. 
My goodness, those things are tasty. I think Oreos are my favorite, but I also really dig some Chips Ahoy, you know? And those big, those black and white cookies, you know, that you get at a bakery? I really only like the black side, but I like it enough to make up for the white side, you know what I'm saying? So, what's next? I'm not entirely sure. I've got, I've got two features written and kicking around inside of my head, and I've got a TV pilot that I'd really like to do, and, you know, the last time I checked, Travis is really coming along nicely on his plans for the next Death Star, so uh, we'll just have to see where the winds of fate take us. The winds of fate? Yeah, the winds of fate. Fair enough. Ethan Hunter, thanks so much for being here. All kinds of information about Ethan and 4Catherine can be found on the film's website at 4CatherineMovie.com. Thanks so much for being here. Good night, Mom. Good night.